Here we've got another BMW E46 M3 Coupe. This is a 2004 build with 81,000 miles. It's a manual transmission and it's in at Reedish Motorsport for the rear axle carrier panel repair and reinforcement process because the owner has discovered he has a hairline crack which is one of the first telltale signs. It's not actually the first thing that happens, but it is one of the most obvious things that an owner can spot. The actual first part of this area starts all on the internal section um, where spot welds break. We've got spot weld broken, quite a bad one there. Also with a corrosion line and a split down the seam sealer there, showing the rear axle cow panel has been moving. Only very slightly, but enough to break some spot welds and then introduce hairline cracks as a secondary effect. We've also got cracks above the front right mounting point, but we can't actually get their camera in there because it's so um, so tight with components, but we will see that shortly once we take the axle out. We've also got another telltale sign that there's an issue inside the car. We've got a broken spot weld here on this line of spot welds which goes across the car. For example, that's a good spot weld and that's a bad one there. Just zoom in so you can see the difference. Quite a jagged, nearly circle, but a jagged line around the edge where the metal is fatigued and broken. So it means that the rear axle cow panel internal cavity cover is uh, a cavity cover panel isn't now connected to the rear axle carrier panel at that location. And sometimes that's where we see the spot welds um, break and then cracks introduce and then you climb up a vertical section inside the car. So we know already we're going to need to be looking inside the car with a borescope camera. We've actually already done that and discovered a couple of cracks so we'll show you those um, shortly. We've also cleaned another patch off here and these are the little bits that people don't realise how important these are. There's a small hairline crack forming around a spot weld here just there which doesn't look much an issue at all but that is a typical sign of the rear axle cow panel starting to move away from the chassis and there's also another little one starting to try and crack there um, and that is in on the left hand side of the chassis leg inside the car so we need to go and have a look at that inside first impressions of the right hand side rear no cracks there obvious at the moment and we need to check out those corners where that rust is as well but the um this is the underside start process, um, 81,000 miles, 2004 manual coupe. Now we'll show you what the inside looked like. So we're inside the boot now, I thought I'd show you the small damages we found on the rear axle carrier panel internal sections um, underneath the boot floor panel. Going through these factory grommet holes using a borescope camera, we'll be able to see that we've got um, a broken spot weld in this top left corner up here identified by that black ring and a small crack nearly all the way around the circumference of the spot weld and then going through this lower cavity panel we've got very early signs of a spot weld breakage and a crack this is a spot weld here there's a crack coming on this black line identifying the black line crack up to the edge of the panel and then the crack is going across towards this vertical climb which we will soon be climbing up it's just started going from the horizontal to the vertical corner and it's just going to be starting to go up shortly so those are the areas that we need to get to um, inside underneath the car in the back area so we're going to need to take the sand deadening pad off then all the seam sealer around the perimeter and then take two mig welds out down the side down there 10 spot welds across the top and then make an incision cut all the way across this boot floor panel remove the front edge of that boot floor panel then we can access the top internal sections of the rear axle carrier panel and then carry out our spot weld repair, crack repair, fire the welding process and then reinstate it, put it all back together, um, carry out the paint seam sealer processes and the sand deadening pad installation. We've also got some damages in the front um, so in front of the rear axle carrier panel. So to do that we're now in the car on the back seat area where the rear passengers would sit here and we've drilled two 20mm holes through the rear seat panel um, to look at the top internal sections of the rear axle carrier panel front pair of MIG welds. And we've got, uh, we don't need a ball scope camera for this one because the cracks, you can see them without the camera. So this MIG weld here in front of my finger has got a hairline crack coming out the front of it. And then this MIG weld here 
on the right hand side of the car is definitely cracked quite an obvious one this one with that black line and then a brown line drifting off towards the back of the car that crack also travels towards the front of the car but it's going outside of the view that we're capable with at the moment um, the other mig weld over there looks like it might be all right but we'll see we still have to go in there to get to this spot where uh, this crack anyway so for that we'll also be doing um, taking off this sound deadening pad entirely and some sound deadening pads of this seat section here then we will be cutting our access panel in the seat panel stop drilling the cracks removing the mix and uh, mig welds replacing them with our own mig welds to penetrate in deeper into the threaded receiver and connect the threaded receiver to the cavity cover panel then um, put in Reedish 005 reinforcement plates which are actually just um, they come as part of the kit they're not actually reinforcement plates they're cover plates um, put a small kink in those to they sit on the seat panel nicely and join this little kink here tack welding them in then doing the painting process possibly a bit of seam sealer and reinstating the sound deadening pad um, and then after all that's finished we'll be doing the cavity wax so we'll be doing that shortly we're just going to get on with the underside first and then come back inside later on that's the underside of the C46 M3 strip now. We still need to take the brake pipes off and take the studs out of the front subframe connection points, but that's what it looks like with all its under trays off and heat shields off. Um, dirty as, as all the road cars are when they come in. We've got on average 15 years worth of dirt and grime, grease, mud um, all over them, and that needs sorted out and taken off. We like to degrease these fully to make sure we can see absolutely every point on these panels so that we can see if there's any issues elsewhere like this area that we cleaned off here before we took the car out. If we hadn't then it would be hard to find that little spot where we're breaking right up there if it was dirty and we'd left it dirty. Um, also this car is suffering with some corrosion issues on the fuel tank strap brackets, the brake pipe brackets both sides also where the fuel tank's been rubbing on the rear axle carrier panel and there also on the handbrake console carrier plus the drain outputs for the seat panel um, I need to check how far we're going on this job but trailing arm pockets are corroded so is the other strap brackets we're well away now from the rear axle carrier panel not where we're working some other corrosion points on the right rear mounting of the uh, rear axle carrier panel not too bad on the left We've got a spot weld that's opened up there and there which has let corrosion in and there some of the studs were nasty one of them snapped off just up here so we'll have to put a new um, rib stud in there you can see the crack that somebody's already noticed cleaned off bare metal and uh, put some pink pen around that also the spring platforms are corroded not only on the nipple section in the middle but all the way around the edge it doesn't look much corrosion at the moment that's because it's all dirty once we take all that dirt off, I'd be quite surprised how much corrosion is hiding under there. Also at the top mounts, where the shock top mounts go on, and around the very edge of the rear axle carrier panel, where it's seam welded, spot welded to the um, wheel arch panel there. So we'll look at that and assess that a bit better, and also quite a lot of corrosion on the battery tray bracket as well, which we'll probably want to do something with. I'll speak to the customer and see if they'd like us to do any work on that whilst we're dealing with the structural work and then we can go from there. So now that it's degreased underneath, I thought I'd start on the corrosion first. Uh, just mix it up a bit. Normally you start on the structural work, but this car is, or this customer, should I say, has specified some extra labor to be spent to tackle the corrosion areas, to make sure those are neutralized, treated, and, uh, and sort of held at bay for as long as possible, whilst we've got great access to the underside of the car. Mm -hmm. So I've started on the right-hand side, just taking out the corrosion around that handbrake console carrier. Doesn't look much when you're far away, but when you get close and you can see the corrosion that's fairly deep around the edges of these pieces. And it's still present because it's in the pits and, well, the peaks and troughs, I suppose, of the metal grain. Um, and you can't actually get that out unless you thin the metal down, but it'd be then so thin on a 1.2 mil panel that it would be pointless. So um, the only way would be to do new metal. Obviously that's not viable for most cars. So um, you just have to knock all the corrosion off and get it to bare metal and then treat it with something like Pour 15 Metal Prep. We do in the backs of these as well. These are terribly affected, these brackets. We'll actually be probably trying to take these brackets off and get the corrosion out from not only at the back of the bracket, but also on the rear axle carrier behind the bracket. There's just no way to get any tooling inside there. 
um, taking it off there where the corrosion, where the fuel tank was rubbing along that edge of the rear axle carrier panel. Haven't touched the mounting points yet, where we'll be doing the plating work and the crack repair work later on. Bit around that cover plug there, spring turret, where the spring perch sits, loads on that piece. And you can see the creeping lines, so we have to make sure that you get the um, e-coat, which is this greeny colour, well away from the creep line. So even though the corrosion only goes to here, the creep line is this sort of like mountainous looking dark patch and that's not corrosion but that's where a part of it is starting to creep underneath the e-coat so you have to get rid of all that and go wider than the corrosion point to make sure that you're treating this area correctly. Um, there's quite a lot up on the top section of this right rear um, panel, mountain point panel and just want to show you the battery tray. I've just knocked some corrosion off to try and find the spot welds that are so badly corroded that I can only just about see the spot welds on that one. I can't even see where the spot weld is anymore. Nor that one. I'm just about to see a circular spot weld there. So we've got quite a fight on our hands to take these off nicely and then hopefully the battery box won't corrode. We want to see that nice and bare metal but without any holes in it. Um, so I just want to picture those ones before I take them off and those ones before I take them off because they are the worst corrosion on on the rear of this car. I'm also going to be going into the uh, vent hole for the fuel pipe ventilation pipes and also into the um, the turret there for the shock absorber to get all of this taken off and even taking the seam section off because there was corrosion you can see the pits on that MIG weld and on this rear axle care panel and there and there just where things flex over the years and sealers and e-coats crack and then moisture and atmosphere get into the bare metal and then the corrosion just festers underneath the seam sealer Let's just try and find you an example of that um, on these edges it's a good example just here so it doesn't look like it's massively corroded but the corrosion is present just because of flex uh, underneath that seam sealer and that's allowed the corrosion to build up so that won't be much but it is still there and if you paint over that that's just pointless really because it'll just come back and whilst we're here we've got a great look at the movement of the rear axle carrier panel now a lovely split in the seam sealer nearly full length nearly to the end of the, of the rear axle carrier panel right up to the mig weld which always holds it nice and tight just because that energy going in that direction pulling that left hand side down is just breaking those spot welds not so much obvious on that breakage there that one's definitely broke and that one's probably broken and then loads of other movement as well because we've got some nasty corrosion all the way around the edge up into the boot floor area so got a work cut out with this corrosion but we're going to tackle it as best as possible and neutralize it get everything to bare metal like that and then treat it with pour 15 metal prep i've now started taking off the corrosion on that little bit of example i just showed you that was building up underneath the seam sealer even though there was no impact on that area that was all coming from flex of the panel making a bare metal area and i said there wouldn't be much under there but there is a decent amount and that probably goes on as well a bit further that's just where the seam sealer is broken off and i'd imagine it's going that way and that way not drastically but that was all hiding underneath seam sealer and if that's left or painted over Yes, it might slow down, but you're just trapping corrosion there. It just, it just isn't as good as removing the loose corrosion and treating it first and then doing your paints and seam sealers on top. So the bracket on the battery box is almost off. It's looking really bad, worse for wear. Possibly one of the most corroded ones we've done. Look how much was underneath the seam sealer. We're just hoping that there's no holes underneath this when we take it off in the actual battery uh, section itself. So, so far so good, there's actually layers of corrosion just stuck to this uh, tray and no obvious holes at the moment but that may change when we start chipping away you see those layers and this stuff which was part of the metal I would suppose and that's gonna have to be wire wheeled and whatever sort of equipment you use to try and clean that off it's gonna thin the metal um, so we're certainly not gonna use any flat disc or grinding wheels we're gonna use wire wheels just to try and gently brush it off. Um, hope we can get most of it out without causing any holes. Here's the brake pipe flexi bracket and just about to take it off, drill out the three spot welds. 
and that gives you an excellent example of why we need to take these brackets off to get to the corrosion not only underneath the bracket there and on the back of the bracket but in between the metal layers sandwiched from there to there where the electrophoretic coating didn't get when the car was dipped that is all corroded and that would be excellent to uh, to blast off and then treat the rear axle cow panel put lots of weld through primer on both pieces and then simply weld them back on that's a thorough job now everything's bare metal underneath i've got the brackets off and taken out the loose corrosion now it's time to treat that so i'm using a pore 15 product called metal prep which just brushes on to the bare metal and you have to keep that moist for 30 minutes just keep going around the car so i'm doing every bare metal point i've done so i've basically taken care of the corrosion first of all before doing the crack work on this car we try to neutralize the corrosion make sure that we don't come across any great problems or holes but luckily we haven't so far a few things are thin like this battery tray but we are um we are okay we're saving it um some heavy corrosion was around that point there and you can see it's just starting to turn it a darker color that's neutralizing it and also coating it with a zinc phosphate finish so that when we go for our etch primer process it will be even better dear than just on bare metal alone now the pour 15 metal prep has been on for 30 minutes we've uh, wiped that off with a warm damp very damp microfiber cloth and now we're just drying the panel with the infrared lamps which is why there's a red color in but it's looking really good very little corrosion anymore it's either been treated removed or treated and we'll just turn that lamp off and show you what it looks like Remember this area here was hugely affected with surface corrosion, not only on that bracket, just going to grab a bracket. This was the bracket, puts that there, and that's the inside of the bracket. And the same was on that rear axle cow panel, but we've uh, managed to treat that, remove most of it and, um, and get that neutralised. Same for the spring perch up there handbrake consoles, a little bit down into the rear trailing arm pockets. Seat panels are affected, but we should still be able to get a grommet in there and use a bit of extra seam sealer. Doesn't really warrant welding, in our opinion. Um, that's the near side bracket area where we took the brackets off and we'll be replacing those later on. Spring perch. Then on the side panel, we had areas up here where it met the wheel arch piece bits of corrosion on that um, left rear mounting point. We have some bad corrosion there and also there. Not so much down there, I was just taking that off to check for any spot weld damages on the chassis leg. And the right rear, that had loads of corrosion all up here, up here, down that side as well. So that's come out really well, pleased with that. And then the battery tray as well, there's nothing now flaky. It's all dry. You can still see the dark areas where that is technically corrosion, still in the grain of the metal. There's not much we can do with that. And then that back side, we've taken that off that exhaust mount. And all the little studs, the four of them were affected that needed doing as well. But I'm quite happy that will last for years and years and years. Once we've got that bone dry, it's already neutralized with Pore 15 Metal Prep. So once that's got etch primer on it, then high build primer, then sprayable seam sealer, and a top coat coloring, um, that is going to be absolutely fine. And if we were worried about it even more, then we'd possibly put wax on it as well. But I think that would be great. I'm glad it hasn't gone through. There's not a hole anymore. And we've got that car to a very good condition compared to what it was like earlier on this morning. And now we can actually start on the corrosion work. I'm sorry, the crack work. You can see a hairline crack coming around that spot weld there. It's another one there where it's broken the paint and gone rusty. A couple of spot welds which are flexing. It's flex on that spot weld there and there, possibly a little a semicircle crack. We know we've got both of them cracked inside, up in behind there, so we need to go inside the car underneath the seat panel. Then we've got that typical crack on the left rear mountain point. Broken spot welds down that side we need to do, plus a little bit of a drop here, we need to get a bit more seam sealer out and stitch weld all that together. Carefully check the chassis leg spot welds, make sure none of them are broken. And again, carefully check this passenger side Sorry, drive, well, right hand side. So make sure there's no crack there and check all these spot welds for any movement, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's coming on well.
Here's the difference between the brackets. This is our exchange bracket program. So we keep a lot in stock that have been blasted. You can't buy these brackets, so we blast them and make sure they're as nearly as good as new. Um, certainly there's no tooling that can get all the corrosion and rust off as good as blasting technique, so that's what we do. You still get a few little fine bits left, just like on the chassis, but I think most people will agree that they'd much rather have that one on their car than that flaky one there. Um, so that's the fuel tank strap brackets. There's the other pair, the blasted one and the non-blasted one. These are the ones I've just taken off this car. Same with this one here, terribly corroded. And that one, this one's excellent. This one's got a little bit of corrosion in, a bit like what taken off, but certainly far better than putting one of these back on or better than leaving it in situ and just letting all that fester because it will come back. So we're doing absolutely everything we can within reason and budget to uh, to make these cars last hopefully what we think is going to be the rest of the life of the car here's the rear of the Reedish v2 reinforcement plates coated with a copper weld through primer so the fronts are obviously bare metal so and they've got the rms part number which informs you that they're a genuine Reedish motorsport plate kit um, and the backs of them hugely important they're coated with some form of weld through primer in our case we use copper and that makes sure there's no bare metal left because that side is the side that touches the chassis so we don't want any bare metal trapped between these plates and the rear axle carry panel even the small little spacer plates however insignificant little bits of metal are they want to make sure they're protected to the best of your ability um, same with the chassis that will also be coated in copper weld through primer and here we've got the other areas I've just masked up, the, where we're putting the fuel tank strap brackets and the brake pipe brackets back in place. I'll be putting the spacer plates on next, which is why they're protected. And I've masked up here, um, so the new bracket has got um, protection behind it, and it's never bare metal. Also the inside is copper weld through primer, so you can see when I offer that up, that it's fully protected under the areas that do touch the chassis and the components which don't touch the chassis, like in that hollow section in there, we'll be able to get our paint and sprayable seam sealer into and also wax it once we've finished welding and painting as well. I've now welded those brackets on. Nice plug welds all the way through. We'll just flatten those off just to make it look fairly original. That's those taken care of and I've welded the spacer plates on as well. And now I'm just working on the crack identification. And just to prove a point, just to show you that there was a hairline crack around that well, we call it a semicircle crack, but that's because it's in the shape of a semicircle. But it's going around the front mountain point stud. Um, that little line there is the crack, and we do a huge oversized stop drill, not only to dead end the crack, but also to allow our penetration of our weld to get into the threaded receiver inside this section and then come out to puddle onto the rear axle carrier panel. And it repairs the crack at the same time. And then we do make a really small incision cut joining the radiuses together, uh, the holes together, but leaving a radius on the outside edge. And that then releases, because of that crack there, it releases a section of rear axle carrier panel, like that. And also shows that there's a little bit of corrosion behind it. That's um, 1.2 millimeters thick, so it's a tiny little panel. We can get rid of that one. We'll be doing the same on that one there. I just need to cut that one a bit deeper, I think. And this one there, one of them was definitely cracked because that just fell out with vibration. And this one here may move, it may not. Might need a little bit more cut in that one, but you can see the theory. We're just taking a section out, there it goes, just to allow our weld to penetrate into the threaded receiver, which is the platform, which is what we want to get it to, and stabilize, but also take care of the crack, get rid of it, and, um, and prove the point that the crack was there. Other little crack was around that spot weld there, one crack going out towards the um, back of the car and one going towards the front of the car. I've double oversized them because I know there's a platform behind. I don't need to rely on just a two mil uh, drill. I'm using an eight mil spot weld drill there because there's a hollow platform above. You see there's about a four mil gap in there. So we like to oversize that one because then we can start a penetration on the thread, on the platform thread and then puddle it down and it makes a sort of a, fills the gap so there's less chance of the panel bending up under um, load and unload over the years to come. We finished with our crack repair. We had the cracks on the front two mounts underneath, plus some spot welds which were showing signs of flex and one spot weld broken. So we've welded those, smoothed those off. And the same with the back left crack, we've welded that and smoothed that off. So they're now repaired. 
and also the areas have been bare metalled all the way where the Reedish V2 reinforcement plate is going to fit. Here's the crack that we welded, that's the weld line and then smooth down so we can get the plate on there. Again that side's bare metal and so is that side there. Um, and I just want to show you a couple of broken spot welds which look minimal and they don't look like they're going to cause much issue for most people but we know these have got serious consequences if left. We've got one broken spot weld here with small, there was corrosion in it but we've wiped that off now. There's a small little hairline crack coming out that side, another little one going round, you just see in the light the difference of the pattern of that crack, visible quite now underneath that spot weld. Also got a spot weld at this section here which is a three layer connection, which has got a crack going down the side of it, you might just be able to pick that up and also a crack coming out the bottom, there it is. That's a good picture and you can also see some corrosion in that one as well. And then lastly, the one that we talked about at the start of the process, which is next to the left rear mounting point, there's where the crack was. And now this spot weld here is broken. So if we can zoom in and focus maybe. You don't get a great view. You can just see a crack forming around the piece above inside the car underneath the boot floor panel. So those three there are dangerous if left because that's telling us that the rear axle car panel is coming away from the chassis down that section of spot welds down that left hand side coming away from the chassis leg so that's why we'll be going inside and doing some stitch welding and also repair work to the inside cavities here and also the inside cavities on the front. Um, now I'm going to put weld through primer on everything that's all bare metal and degreased and then we'll be ready for the reinforcement plates to be welded on. And now in the wheel arch taking the corrosion off of the other points um, which is the shock absorber turret where the top mount sits terribly corroded and you can see how far I'm having to chase this to find some clean metal and look it's just lifting it's well it's been there for ages underneath the seam sealer and if it's just left it just creeps and creeps and it's unlikely to hole itself because this is a really thick panel it's almost two mil thick but um, what's the point of having rust there you might as well to attend to it and treat it if we're uh, if we're painting these arches anyway it just seems sensible to sort this all out at the same time Here's some of the pieces we're replacing on this BMW 46 M3. Genuine BMW metal brake pipes, front to rear. Also the over axle, the short one as well. And all the clipping point brackets, um, flexi spring clips, the joiner, and then the three plastic pieces as well, which help hold them in. Got new aquaplane guards for the rear. Um, one exhaust rubber mount plus the through bolt. We've also got copper nuts, but they're not in this picture. Steering tie rod, uh, gator clamps various fixings to replace underneath the car as we're rebuilding it and the rear xenon drop link level sensor we see so that one's being replaced as well. Here's the underside now we've finished the welding of the Reedish V2 reinforcement plate so that's the left front, the right front, the right rear and the left rear all welded on and you can see I've now cleaned off the I've flattened off the plug welds underneath so that the bushes can sit nice and flat that's a really important stage and then just buffed around the plates with a wire wheel just to clean off the mig welding dust which is generated during the welding process so we've got one plate two brackets that we replaced spacer plates same on the other side right rear plate left rear plate some welding in the corners and three plug welds down here to replace the broken ones, flatten those off to make them neat and also done a continuous stitch weld down that side to join these two panels together with stitch welding rather than just uh, three spot welds that it did have from the factory. Done a couple of welds on the uh, trailing arm pockets because they were showing signs of movement and then obviously taking up the corrosion uh, treatment that you've seen earlier in the video and now we're just getting ready with air blow everything all the cavities make sure there's no dust and grit and debris in there um panel wiped it so it's squeaky clean and now we're just going to put a little bit of etch primer very light dusting first of all just to stop them trying to um box guys in the atmosphere make sure they're protected as best as possible still need to sort a couple of spot welds out got one up there that's broken that needs some work that one was starting to show movement. I think that one also had a crack in it. So we'll do those as well. Um, and then we'll be getting on to the paint and protect process. 
Well, we've removed the sound editing pad and cleaned off the seam sealer and the, um, the sticky sort of glue that bonds it all together. And now we've come up with a new way um, of repairing minor internal rear cracks like this car had. It had a spot weld broken over here underneath this panel and another spot weld with a crack in it underneath this boot floor panel in the internal section of the rear axle car panel. We've attacked it from another way and done it slightly differently um, because it only had a minor crack uh, rather than cutting out the boot floor. So we won't be cutting out the boot floor like I talked about in the video earlier on, but we have taken care of the internal cracks at the rear. Going to be moving on to the front internal section shortly. Just going to be doing some replacement um, plug welding. Well, I've already done it in this side. This is why I took the sound deadening pad off to make a better finish. I've done two plug welds going upwards from underneath the car because there were two showing signs of breakages on the rear axle carrier panel underneath. Also that one in there underneath was broken and that one had a small crack in it so they've been welded up. Definitely right to take the sound ending pad off because we've got a broken spot weld here which means that the boot floor isn't held correctly anymore in that corner location and that would be a risk of uh, if it then that one's holding more energy and we don't want that one to break and then that one to go so we're going to now do um, remove that one do a plug weld and then also do some stitch welding down the sides and across this panel edge at the boot floor to make sure it's all held properly um, and then we can move on to the front internal mig weld sections here's the underside now it's in etch primer which is the first stage of our paint and protect system so that'll be applied to all the bare metal areas, the areas that we've been welding or corrosion treating. Um, first of all, we had the Pore 15 metal prep, which neutralized the corrosion. And once all that was dried off, now we've applied etch primer. So that's down to the rear axle, uh, the rear trailing arm pocket. Over the brackets, we've done corrosion removal. Seen a stitch weld in here, where we've stitch welded from inside the car, the rear axle carrier panel to the chassis legs, because there was a couple of spot welds that were looking poor. So we drilled those out, where well, they were actually cracked. But, uh, and also that front one there. Um, done that right front plate, the brackets here, corrosion removal up there, right rear bracket, bracket reinforcement plate, left rear, plug welds down here that were done and then flushed off, and then the full stitch welding up there. Turrets have been corrosion treated as well, and so has the battery tray. This was really quite thin and pitted, which it still is but uh, it hasn't holed or gone through, which is good. So we're safe to use that again, taking the corrosion out of these little studs here for the battery tray inside, and also off the exhaust bracket there. Um, that's pretty much it. So we're ready for a pressed pair of the car as well. Soft edge mask, the inside of the arch, got a full cover on the vehicle, taped around all the perimeter, and now I can go on and do high build primer. Here's the panel, now we've applied the high build primer, which is a matte black finish. That's over the rear axle carrier panel and the overlapping panels. So that's the boot floor panel, the battery tray panel, a little bit into the seat panel, handbrake console panel, and also down towards the rear trailing arm pockets. It's drying with the infrared lamp on it at the moment. Once that's dried, then I'll be applying the sprayable seam sealer. So here's the underside of the E46 M3. Now it's been, uh, it's had its sprayable seam sealer and the top coat applied, which in this case is a, an OEM version or our version of the E-coat colorings. That's dried overnight and we've come in the next morning and it's all dry so we've been able to start fitting the new BMW genuine brake pipes. Um, it's looking really good, very nice smooth textured finish, also quite thin as well. We don't have to have a lot of floppy texture anymore, especially a lot less than the factory actually. Um, so yeah, in our opinion it looks a lot neater. Obviously this is only this good just due to the preparation standards and the corrosion removal that this customer specified when we replaced these brackets, otherwise there was tons of corrosion on there. There's the left Reedish V2 reinforcement plate and the spacer plates. Took out the corrosion and treated it up around the spring perch area. Also got our stitch welds that are showing through where we held the reactor cad panel to the chassis legs inside the car and to the boot floor panel over there. A couple of stitch welds down in that corner as well. There was lots of corrosion here, remember, where the fuel tank had been um, rubbing. And what I should say as well is this is totally dry, nothing at all on your hands. It doesn't come off. You can wash this, jet wash it. Um, dirt doesn't really stick to it that well. It is a, uh, a very good finish. So you can keep cleaning these year on year and not expect to have any problems. Brackets replaced. 
A little bit of stitch riding done just there on the roof 39 pocket. More corrosion taken out of that spring perch area. There's the right rear reinforcement plate. And we've got new studs here, here and here. So the clipping points are all correct. A little bit of extra strength welding in that corner. Here's the BMW textured finish. A little bit thicker than ours. There's BMW. And then this is ours, a little bit thinner. but still gives a texture and rolls around the welds nicely. You can still see the weld lines. We don't hide anything here. But you can see um, that it's well protected but not a thick seam sealer. And then that's the left rear reinforcement plate. These are our new holes where we get our cavity waxing ones in the internal section. Taken off the seam sealer on the chassis legs to make sure those spot welds are good, which they are. Carried out three plug welds up there. <clears throat> also some strength welding in the corner. And then done a continuous stitch where these two panels are separate all the way along. You can see them there and there. We've done a join line all the way along. Smoothed it and finished it so it looks original. Taking out corrosion up on the uh, spring coach as well. Shock absorber turret, sorry. Just coated that and we've done a half blend up into the wheel arch. Um, no full wheel arch was specified in this vehicle. So now we're putting the genuine BMW brake pipes back along with the metal clippings, uh, metal clip points, new joiner up there as well. And we've got a natural blend just falling off halfway through the fuel tank area on the seat panel. Those are finished texture here and that's the original e-coat colour that we're trying to match. So it looks quite good depending on what angle you look at it at and from a distance you won't really see much at all. One new stud point here as well because that one had broken off a bit like these ones and those ones. So we put a new one there. That's our workshop cover that gets changed back for the customer's one. We just don't like painting over the customer's one so we paint over our own. And then we got the battery tray as well which has come out really nicely. This was badly corroded, quite thin as you remember I talked about a few times and we had corrosion up on the back of that metal bracket for the um, exhaust rubber mount. But that's come out well, it didn't ever go through so there's no holes in it even though it is quite thin, it's still going to be um, structurally sound and we took the corrosion off around these studs as well and then recoated them with etch primer, high build primer, spray or seam sealer and top coat colour which is e-coat version. So that's looking nice and will be protected for years to come. So shortly we'll be going on to finish the front um, internal welding up inside the car up in those front MIG weld mounts, putting some new stitch weld, MIG welds in there and then we'll be cavity waxing later on. We're inside the car now doing the internal front sections. And we're taking an access panel out of the seat panel and we can see we've got a small hairline crack just at the top of this MIG weld up here and also on the other side, this is the right hand side got a larger crack certainly not the worst we've seen but the cracks going through that MIG weld across up towards the back of the car and also down here towards the front of the car. Here's the internal front mounts finished now uh, cracks welded also the MIG welds removed and our version of welds installed um, to connect the threaded receiver to that cavity cover panel and we've also done a couple of stitch welds at the bottom edge to connect that cavity cover panel and in turn the rear um, for the receiver to the seat panel itself. Painted the inside black. Um, now we're getting ready to put the Reader's 005 reinforcement plates on, or the, the cover plates, with a 12mm hole to access for future bore scope and camera inspections, and also cavity waxing. Copper weld through primer on the back there, and in distance you can just see some of the stitch welding applied. Only just done that, so that still needs cleaning up, but stitch welding applied to the rear axle carrier panel to hold it to the shaft leg. I've finished the painting on the inside of the boot now. And now you can see the stitch welding a little bit clearly. Um, so painted the top of the rear axle carrier panel, a bit of blend into the chassis legs and over the boot floor panel with a gentle blend down to the rest. And it matches the original colourings down here quite well, so I'm pleased with that. Um, now we can get on and do some cavity waxing. Here we are just topping up the cavity wax. Going in the front sections at the moment, you can see some of the wax coming through in a gas output from this rear section. And it's dripping out of the flutes of the join of the rear axle power panel to the boot floor panel, making sure that all the inside areas where we've done welding are completely protected now. Um, and they've got a wax content in there like the factory, but actually more than the factory ever put in there. Now here's the boot on the E46 M3. Now we start to fit in all the customers' components back in. And we just need to put the sound deadening pad back on top of the rear axle carrier panel where we did the welding earlier on. 
So we've got a new genuine BMW sound pad here. I'm just going to get that stuck on next. Here's the finished sound pad nib. And now we've installed that, heated it up and stuck that down to the rear axle carry panel and the overlapping panels. Looks really good in there. And if we look in from the rear, looks a factory finish. That's how they come from factory with just a sound deadening pad on top. And now we can carry on fitting the inside of the car. The rebuild's all finished on this M3 now. We've fitted the fuel tank, the rear axle, the exhaust system, the heat shields, the under trays, the V-brace. And we carried out a full brake fluid bleed uh, through the system and bled that out. And they've just um, run through the list of things that we've carried out. So it's had the Reedish Motorsport E46 RACP repair and reinforcement process which as you've just been watching in this video includes the four reinforcement plates underneath the car, the two spacer plates, um, plus all the crack repair and spot weld repair work before the plates go on. Then we've also um, carried out some internal cavity work in the rear section up here and also done some stitch welding inside the car to hold the rear axle car panel up to the chassis legs. Across the boot floor panel as well there's some new stitch welds that you might just be able to see in the distance. And then inside the cavity on the front sections, we've also had to do MIG welding repair. Um, then this customer specified a few extra hours labour to take off the corrosion. So these brackets up here that were corroded were taken off, aqua blasted, and then re-welded back on. Also the corrosion was taken off the spring turret area, the um, perch where the shock absorbers fit, across the back of the rear axle carrier panel corners up here and especially on the battery tray as well which was terribly corroded and had that bracket up here that's now gone and it's all been treated with pore 15 metal prep and as well as that sad etch primer high build primer sprayable seam sealer and top coat as well and it's all totally dry system so you can touch that wash that off it's all well protected and obviously we take all the components off before we do any of that that's why we get good good results where the paint's all the way back well past the back line of the bumper because all the bumpers taken off before that so when the car is refitted it just looks like the whole rear end has been painted which technically it has but you can't see the uh, the start and finish lines of our paint process then we've done an extensive cavity wax i still dribble in at the moment um, and when that fun it finally dries we can start finishing and checking out putting all the grommets inside the car we've done a lot of them underneath the car to keep as much cavity wax in as possible but it does carry on creeping for at least a 24 hour period and then on top of that we've done um, a few new items done down at the front end we've done new steering tie rods um, plus the lock nuts and we've taken those apart before fitting them and coated the inside threads with a nickel anti-seize paste which you can see driven out of those two slit lines there so that'll make sure that they're always um, protected and they'll come undone for years to come in the future it's also had a purple tag refurbished steering rack um, and they've sent it, the refurbishing company sent it with aftermarket gaiters which is why we couldn't put clips on there. Uh, they've got cable ties with the BMW clips just won't fit but they are adequate, we're happy with that. So new purple tag refurbished steering rack. Then we've done the aquaplane guards at the rear. They either were broken or not fitted quite correctly. So new ones are those plus the rivets grey longer rivets and the black ones as well. We've also done a little bit of stitch welding on the corner of the rear axle, uh, sorry, rear chain arm pocket just up there where it was showing signs. I've just gone and put some dirt on that, which I'll need to take off. That's some of the brake pipe wax where we waxed earlier on. One of the other things we've done as well is the metal brake pipes front to rear, genuine BMW pipes, which are black powder coated and then they've got a white um, wax on there at the moment, which will dry transparent it just makes sure that everything's protected and it'll come undone in the years to come if it ever does need to come off the car again also one of the under trays was had an incorrect fixing up here because this heat shield had opened up so there was a large bolt in here so new heat shield and then the two correct bolts as well rear anti-roll bar drop links were replaced on both sides and then also the rear xenon headlight level sensor system because that one was seized but now you can see it articulating nicely because we've put um, wax in there as well on the ball and socket joint. Uh, the right rear exhaust rubber mount was broken, so a new one there, and the copper nuts to hold that on as well. And then lastly, we've done the IVAC camber arm kit, which is a bit of aluminium camber arms, 
plus the two ball joints at the bottom of the trailer arm because everything was seized together in those locations there. That completes the underside repair and now we can take it for wheel alignment and also carry out the exit clean which means cleaning the outside of the car and also the inside of the car. Time for the exit wash which is uh, wheel wash first then snow foam rinse. That's the repair finished now, this E46 M3 at Reedish Motorsport. We've carried out a 12 mile road test and the wheel alignment process and the full brake fluid lead and that's had the rear axle carry panel repair and reinforcement process as you've been watching plus the corrosion removal some internal rectification welding work as well and then the extensive paint and protect system plus a few other choice upgrades like the eye back camber arms the ball joints the exhaust rubber mount and the brake pipes just to name a few